Welcome everybody to our show. This is Custom Fab Garage on our channel Octane TV on YouTube. Make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. And on top of that, make sure that you hit the notification bell so that you can get all the new content that comes out weekly and even every day. We are gonna be doing this 2017 Nissan Ultima. Every speaker in this vehicle seems to be blown. I'm not sure if somebody just abused it really bad or what happened, but it sounds really, really bad. We're gonna go ahead and replace all those today. Okay, so we're working on this 2017 Nissan Ultima. If you want to tell us what you're doing here, we're using our plastic pry tool right here. We have to take down the pillar to get to the, the little uh, uh, plastic cover for the speaker. So first step is we're gonna to need to remove this actual A pillar because that A pillar is blocking that from being able to come up. Look at him work his magician hands. So kind of show the camera what you just did right there, Big Pimpin. Okay, so on the back here, there's this little bitty uh, metal piece that slides into a little bitty piece up here. It's a little uh, So you're trying clip. to pull that out to get that clip out? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you have to wiggle this down here. Pull that up. Because there's two clips. And those clips are probably what's keeping that piece from coming up. Mm -hmm. Okay. So on the back here, you got this little like restraint that way it don't yeah we'll just let that fold and dangle <laughs> or you can take out the screw yeah. like i did on the other side or pull this little pl uh, thing out yep. me personally i just take out the screw that way i don't screw it up yeah you get that joke right there take out the screw so you don't screw it up <laughs> or screw it down <laughs> key don't drop the screw or the soap <laughs> this is a little hole Okay. It has a little. So that way it holds in there. That way it don't go flying at your face and and kill you when you get into a wreck with the airbag deploying. And then there's the plastic piece that you'll want to take up. Get your plastic pry tool in there, and that'll help you to be able to get everything up. They got several little bitty clips in here. You just have to, you know, be careful to get them up. Yeah, you gotta be very careful. You don't wanna break anything. That's the biggest thing is a lot of these older cars like this, which this car isn't really that older, but you gotta be careful with the way that they make these hexagonal patterns like this, because if you push on it too hard, this start will just break off. So you gotta be very careful the way you do it. Especially with the older cars, this gets brittle. That will brutal. be brittle and it will break, especially S10s. They're okay. the most notorious for it. So here is your speaker right there. Now we are gonna take a three and a half and put in there. This has a four, a four bolt pattern on it but we're gonna put an actual three and a half in there. We'll show you kind of the difference of what it'll look like. And these two parts right here are what kind of slide into the dash like this. So you wanna keep careful that you don't, when you're pulling up on it, you wanna slide it out. You don't wanna just like this, don't jerk it up. So and that way you don't break that off. And then there's the connectors and that's how it sits in there. So that piece is keeping you right there. That's holding down with the A pillar. Here is the stock speaker, which has a four bolt location, but it only uses three bolts. We're gonna be using a three and a half to replace it, which it, it will bolt up right where those go because it'll sit like this. Um, this is your three and a half magnet. This is your stock magnet right here. Both are four ohm, just a much better speaker here. We're gonna add these, the BB4PR. Now I would use a three and a half. They make a three and a half inch version, but I only have the four inch. So I'm gonna put those on there just for extra protection to base blockers. So you don't blow these because these do not have a built-in crossover or capacitor, but these do, if you see right here. So I'm gonna go ahead now. My tweeter does have one, I believe, yep, right there. But I just wanna make sure that the speaker doesn't get overpowered or they turn it up too much with the bass. So I'm gonna put these in here just as an added protection. And these are the speakers we're gonna be using today. These are really good speakers for doing dash speakers. Um, I'll put the link down below for you can purchase them through Amazon and it'll come directly right to your house.
So here is the speaker he's removed right here. And then there's a little clip down there and you're gonna unplug that. So basically you're gonna have to push on that clip right there, see where he's getting at. And then you click that down and then that will unplug that speaker for you. Now these do have a pretty good amount of depth down in there. The new speakers that we're putting in have pretty big speakers on them, or magnets, I apologize. So you do have a pretty decent amount of room. Now what I would recommend is using a speaker adapter harness. We do not have any in stock, nor do anybody have any right now. So unfortunately, we're gonna have to tap these, but I would recommend getting a speaker harness. That way you can just plug and everything's plug and play right into the speaker. All right, so we usually don't do things like this. We usually will just use a speaker harness you know, connector, but we went ahead and T-tapped this. The part right here that where you push down on the top right here, we use the left as the positive. And we also ran a base blocker in here and then this will plug into our speaker. But we usually just will just use a speaker harness and basically just plug that in and then plug it right into the speaker. It's already got these two ends on there and then a plug that just plugs right in directly into there. So not a big deal. All right, so we got the speaker down into there. Now we're gonna have to put the bolts down to actually bolt it down into the, to the top. So that one is actually installed right there and mounted down. Everything looks really good and then the actual cover will go right back over. All right, and then this is how the actual grill goes back over. You just slide it in down there with those two tabs. And then when you push it back down, that'll just snap right down into place. Remember, oh, we got to plug that sensor in, right? No, this Oh, it's the other side. Okay, so this has got a dummy sensor on the driver's side, but the passenger side, you have to plug that sensor and there's a plug because that's actually probably the, I'm guessing that's for the weather and everything else like that, inside temperature and stuff. There you go. All right, so on this 2017 Nissan Ultima door panel, this is the first step we're gonna start with. It's taking off basically, I, I don't know what you would wanna call it, the door handle itself trim that goes on the outside. So basically this piece right here, and then once he removes that with his plastic pry tool, correct? Mm -hmm. So you want to use a plastic pry tool. You don't want to use anything metal because it will mar up all the plastic. And that's how it comes off right there. So Sorry about my off, focusing. Pop off the top first. And then move your, move move your way, way down. down to the bottom down here. And it has this thing that slides out, a little tab. Yep. Got it. Pops right up. Flip it over. Just two little tabs, little big buttons you push on this side. Get this one. They're always a pain on Nissans. I don't know why. Nissan makes their push in so small and so hard to push in that it is so hard to make those plugs come out. I don't know why they do this. So be careful. Push it in right here. The other one's on the other side. Push it in. Pull it right out. So there's a screw right there. Screw up here. And then we have another screw up here. Boom. And then you got one back in here. Yeah, there's a little bitty tab right here. You see the little tab right here? Yep. Take your little pry tool, or this right here, I'm using a pick tool. tool. Yeah. And Which pull it in there. Pull Just enough to pull it out. Like that. And you just pull it the rest of the way out. And there's a and little behind there we got a screw and there's a little little indentation okay and got two little tabs right there that slides out okay on some models they have a light on this model here they do not also a little tab you'll definitely want to remove this before because if you don't you'll have problems when you're holding the door panel by yourself and just push it back through that way it'll come up through the door panel all those little tabs and usually there will be lights in different models these screws are 10 millimeter or Phillips. Which sometimes Nissan likes to torque them in so hard that using the 10 millimeter is gonna be a lot better than doing the screws. But if they come out real easy with the screws, you're more welcome to use that. The silver one goes, this one goes there, black ones go on the other parts. The black ones on the are trim. A lot yep, and the black ones are longer. So they are different color and they are different length. So remember that you don't wanna stick them in the wrong holes because if you do that, you might hit the window or you know, you might mess up your window tent. That's definitely something you wanna keep track of when you're taking door panels off. A lot of Fords, a lot of Chevys, they'll use 18 different size bolts, especially different links. See the difference? That's why you don't wanna make those mistakes. Then we're gonna start pulling the door panel off. Maybe start over by towards the 
actual door jam first and move your way around it's a lot easier to get a hold of it and grip onto it if the door panels haven't been removed they're going to be a pain in the butt to get off just to be honest with you and it's going to feel like you're about to break your arm when you pull these off sometimes so be careful okay and then back here what you're going to want to do is you're going to pull up here and then you're going to pull straight directly up bottom one you're going to do the same thing pull and then pull it's a ball head on the bottom ball head on the bottom and then it's more of like a piston top on the back and then you also have a plug right here that you're going to need to unplug now we've already unplugged the bottom plug down here so we don't have to unplug that then the door panel will come off now this particular door panel we have we had another pop piece come off you'll hear it when it falls but notice we're missing a green piece somewhere we had one fall off but might be up at the top Right. But that's what the back, yeah, but that's what the back of the door panel looks like. And you want to make sure you pick those up and put them back on or the door panel will not go on correctly. And here is your wonderful, lovely speaker. And if you look, this thing has pulled itself away from the oh, rubber. No. It sounds so bad. This might go down in history as the top 10 worst speakers we've heard. I mean, it literally sounds like it's just flapping. It doesn't even make actual vocals like it just makes flapping noises. All right, right there, we're gonna unplug that plug that goes on the outside of the speaker. And then we're gonna have three 10 millimeter bolts or screws, whichever you prefer to take off the actual plastic housing on this. Now, I would advise buying the Nissan uh, actual Nissan harness, speaker harnesses that plug into here and the Nissan speaker adapters. We will put the links down below on Amazon where you can buy those and typically they will be about, you know, two to five day shipping. Right now, you can't get them for weeks, so. Unfortunately, we're gonna to have to modify these. So what we're doing here is we cut out the middle part of the speaker and we're gonna sand this ledge down right here so we can make it flat. And in theory, what we did was we cut out this part of the speaker and the magnet because it was already separated to begin with. So he just cut all that out. That way we can make room for this speaker to fit down into there. So it's kind of hard. Now this is the speaker we're gonna be using is a Sir One Vega because it fits in here. These are 300 watt max speakers. Um, I'll put the part number down below, but this is the actual Sir One Vega speaker that we will be using in this, which is the XED series. So we're going to be using these speakers. XED 6.2. Yeah, the XED 6.2 is where we're going to be using on this particular install, mainly because the cool thing about these speakers is if you look at the way the basket is set up, they're set up like a five and a quarter on the backside, so you can use them as like a five and a quarter, a six, or even a six and a half, where all the other speakers, the basket is so large that you can't fit it down in there. So this actually fits into that hole correctly. So we sanded this whole ledge down right here, so it'd be flat. And then that way that this speaker will just sit right on top of that ledge. And that way it'll just sit flat right on there, boom. All right, here it is bolted up with it modified and everything. Now, like I said, I would typically use a speaker adapter plate and a harness. We just T-tap these. I will put the link down below for the actual, so you can just screw it right in. You don't have to do any of these modifications if you don't have to. If you do want to do it, save some money, you're more welcome to. Same way with that, you just plug and play right into the speaker. So if you don't have the capability to get the speaker harness or the speaker adapter, you can do it the way we did it, or you can do it the easier way and it costs you maybe $30, $40 and do it the other way, you know, just where it's all bolt in and plug and play. All right, so we're gonna remove these rear speakers. And the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna start removing all these push pins that are back here on this plastic piece. There's one, two, three, and then four and five on that side. So we're gonna remove all these push pins right here. And there's those for you. How you remove them? I'll show you over here. There's a little bit of like indentations right here. Pop that right out. Pop it up. And you're gonna pull it out. I can't reach it. There you go. That's what that looks like right there. All right, so we got all the pop pieces out, so now we're gonna try to remove this piece, which I'm guessing- It has to go down, come out. It's gonna have to go down? Yeah, 
see it's curled around. On this ledge on the behind it. Mm -hmm. So right now it's behind the seat. Back there? Mm -hmm. Is it something we're gonna have to remove that back seat panel? Uh, All right, so Beavis has uh, figured out a way to finagle his ass out of this situation. See if he can follow la la all the way across this seat and get the other side out. We're back here. He seems to figure out ways to get these back seats out faster than anybody. Must be that Anderson mentality. Yeah. <laughs> all the ghetto to do. Yeah, I'll figure out a way to get this out. All right, and then that's how it comes out. And this is the back side of it right here. And there's a big ledge right here, if you see. So and this pinch weld all the way around here. So it's kind of a pain in the butt to get out of there because that thing sticks up so far right there. Go ahead and take out the C-pillars just to make some room and see what all it is. They're just popping off with the snap clips, which is nice. Um, just be real careful. That part's getting caught on the headliner. It's lovely. And then that should just pull right out, so. Boy, they make these terrible to get these back seats out. They don't think about ever having to get these back seats out, I'm telling you. On this side, and I imagine on the other side. Over here, too far right. You going over there. Okay, I can feel it. It's right here. Pull, pull, pull it out. It's a little lever. Just pull that out right like that. It's on both sides, on his side as well. And then this piece will basically just come out. So boom, this back seat will come right out. without the seat belts being caught. <laughs> okay, so basically there is a hook right here that is connected down underneath this black piece right here. So you gotta get it, you gotta push this part down to get it up underneath there, but. Push it in. And then push and then it down. It pops out. Yep. Like that. And then if you want some extra food later, we got some dog food. How hungry are you, Beavis? Are you hungry enough to eat that fucking dog food? <laughs> a peanut butter crunch. We got, it looks like a candy bracelet that's deteriorated. Look at that thing. It looks like skeleton bones. Got some french fries. Got some french fries. <laughs> Got some pencils. <laughs> Start a you little art club want. back here. Probably a 12 millimeter. So underneath this cushion right here, if you go underneath, right about there. It's hard to see because this thing is not focusing. Right there is, so basically right here. Is your bolt. It's hard to see, I'm sorry. It's super dark in here. So that bolt that we were talking about that is down here is a 13 to take off this cushion. Right up underneath it right down here, it's black. So it's a 13 millimeter. So he's gonna take off that 13 millimeter off this whole piece right here. That way we can get the C-pillar off back there and then we can get the whole rear deck out. A lot of work just to change out the rear speakers in these cars. These newer cars, they just do not give a shit about taking the speakers out easily. It'd be nice if they just put a grill over it so you could remove the speaker or mount it from the underneath side, but that would be nice to us. The back side, so when you want to get them out, they just slide. So you just basically just push up and it will come out. And that's how this bad boy comes out. The reason why we couldn't get this seat pillar out is because it has a push tab right here. So just realize that's all behind there. We took that piece off and put that down there. And then here's the back side of the C-pillar. You got push pins, all different types of things that you got back here. Kind of weird the way they're set up. I'm gonna repeat the same process on the passenger side. We're gonna move the bolt at the bottom down here. We're gonna push up, pull that out, take out that push pin on that side, and then remove that C-pillar. We've got access to this whole rear deck. I'm guessing that there's probably more stuff back there that we're gonna have to take out because it's not being nice to us to come out. Oh my God, Becky, we got it out. Jesus, look at that thing. All that just to get to these stinking six by nines that sound like rattled asshole. So I would advise using the 10 millimeter because they torque them in so tight. And when you try to use the screwdriver, it, it will strip 
and it will tear them up. Nissan's notorious for this, so I would definitely go with the 10 millimeter. It'll get them right out, no issues. These are the stock lovely speakers that they put in here. Look like some phase linear, Jensen, road gear, dual, $2 dual cone speakers from AutoZone or Walmart. These speakers. Made in Mexico. Mexico! You guys like Mexico? Well, unfortunately, these weird Stranger Things shaped tulip 6x9 bolt holes are totally different than standard 6x9s here. So we did have to self tap these. And on this side, I'm going to do the same thing and self tap them. So the 6x9 hole itself on the back side is the same as factory, but they're not the same tulip style bolt holes here. So you will have to make your own holes to make these actually fit. Thank <laughs> you. 